and welcome to the next episode of Ben's Agricultural Adventures. Um, we're still in America at the moment and we've moved back down south to Kansas, um, part of the fall harvest. And uh, I've just, just been driving past the field and uh, I just wanted to see um, if anyone could figure out what they thought this plant was. is a cotton field and uh, it's not quite ready as you can see but I, I just thought this was you know this was fantastic would you know I, you, I've heard of you know cotton picking and the cotton harvest and things like that but actually seeing the plants out here it's actually you know it's really interesting let's take a closer look this once upon a time would have been the flower and that dries up and as you can see it comes off of the pod and then as the pod matures and you know dries out and spends time in the sun it eventually splits open revealing the lovely cotton so it is actually it is really good it feels just like um like a like a cotton pad you know what what women use to take the makeup off and I know, I know it is cotton, but you wouldn't really expect it to be as soft, you know, such with it being such a raw product, you know, without any um, going through any processing. But there is, interestingly, it's there's bumps in it, and um, those bumps are actually the seed. Um, so I think the idea is, eventually the cotton blows away, and you're left with uh, the seed. So I don't know how tall you'd be expecting the cotton plant to be, um, but I'd actually say it's probably only about half, I mean I'm knelt down, but I'd probably say it's only half a metre off of the ground. Um, and it actually reminds me a bit of a tomato plant, you know, obviously not as tall, but I think the, the leaves and, you know, I think just the structure of the plant really just, uh, it seems quite tomato-esque. So it's, it does actually need irrigation, the cotton plant. Um, and for those who don't know what that means, irrigation is uh, water in the field, but on a mass scale. So this is achieved with a pivot, as you can see behind me. And you've got to think of this essentially as a hand on a clock. It'll move round, this, round in a circle, just like on a watch, and uh, it'll spray the field with water as it goes round. So the reason being for using pivots, especially in Kansas, is because Kansas used to be uh, the Wild West, what you'd see in your cowboy films. So it's really sandy soil, and also it's extremely hot with very little rainfall. I've got a, a clod of soil. You can see just how little moisture there is by how easily this clod breaks apart. This lack of moisture also contributes to the soil blowing away very easily, as we can see the sand is trapped in, this, in these cotton fibres. This also means that the soil is good at drainage. Now this is handy in England where we have a lot of rainfall and drainage is key because uh, if you didn't have the drainage then you'd get a lot of standing water and that can often, that, you know, that can kill the plants because it, it drowns the roots and you know, stops them getting oxygen. But it's the other way around out here. Um, you know, drain, the drainage is so good that the plants aren't able to access the water. Pivots are often half a mile long, and the reason for this is the fields are split up into one mile square blocks. Hanging from the frame is the water pipes. The very end of the pipes are the nozzles, which creates a wide spray pattern. This can be thought of as putting your thumb over the end of a hose, causing the water to fan out. The reason we want this is because if the water were just to come out of the pipe, it would splash the spot soil away, possibly exposing the roots. And also, not of the water, all of the water would reach the plants such as the ones on the outside of the field. 